There are some species in Iowa that get incredibly misrepresented, misidentified, and treated like garbage. Now, the problem is some of these fish are actually some of our most valuable fish in Iowa native fish that deserve to be protected and taken care of. First off, let's look at the big mouth buffalo. The big mouth buffalo is not an Asian carp. The big mouth buffalo is a native Iowa fish species. It is native to the central parts of Iowa as well as the Mississippi and Missouri River drainages. There was a study published in the past five years that document big mouth buffalo at living to be over a hundred years old. While this isn't the norm, it certainly can happen. The big mouth buffalo has diamond shaped scales and it has a mouth that is more forward facing than most other buffalo species. They tend to be social creatures. So oftentimes if you find one, you might find multiple together and they can grow very quickly. They generally are filter feeders and you'll often see them with their mouths up in the air, just kind of doing this either on the surface of the water or subsurface and they are just filtering out microinvertebrates from the water as they eat. The smallmouth buffalo has a similar appearance to a bigmouth buffalo, but the smallmouth buffalo has a mouth that faces downward, and it looks more like a vacuum hose compared to the bigmouth buffalo, more like a traditional sucker mouth. Smallmouth buffalo have these black beady eyes. Their body shape is a little thicker and deeper, and it has a more humped back than a bigmouth buffalo. The smallmouth buffalo is also very nearly indistinguishable from a separate species called the black buffalo. I am not qualified to explain the difference between a smallmouth buffalo and a black buffalo, but what I'm told based on my interwebs research is that black buffalo have a little bit smaller eyes than smallmouth buffalo and fatter lips with a distinct groove on the lower lip. Both black buffalo and smallmouth buffalo will feed on invertebrates as well as microinvertebrates. There's another couple species in the Catastomidae family that are kind of difficult to identify. I'm not going to go through every single one of those, but I'm gonna go through a few of the common ones that we have in Iowa. Quillback carp suckers. They often have a very long quill-like dorsal fin, but their main feature is actually the absence of something. And I quote, a nipple-like projection that's on their lower lip. River carp suckers look pretty identical to a quillback carp sucker, but the river carp suckers have this little nipple on their lower lip. High fin carp suckers are another carp sucker species that's very similar. They have this really steep forehead that distinguishes them from the others. Freshwater drum are a really cool native fish that tends to thrive around rocky habitat. They feed on small bait fish and invertebrates. They are a relative of the red drum or redfish that you may have heard of that live in the saltwater and also in marshy brackish water areas. Freshwater drum are typically a grayish color. In some waterways, they can become rather dark colored. They are a strong fish and they typically have a humped back. You may have also heard of them referred to as sheep's head, which I don't really like that nickname because there's an actual fish species called a sheep's head, lives in the ocean. Sheep's head is technically not the same thing. We also in Iowa have quite a few species of red horse and I'm not going to go into all the different red horse varieties today, but if you wanted, you could take a deep dive into all the distinguishing features of our red horse species in Iowa. Moving into non-native species, let's talk about the common carp. The common carp were introduced to North America in the 1830s and introductions continued well through the 1800s and even into the 1900s. This was done by both private entities and governments. Now at this point, common carp is here to stay. Are they native? No, but they're pretty much established here at this point. Common carp actually have no teeth in their mouth, but at the back of their throat, they have what's called pharyngeal teeth. So if you ever see a carp skull, you'll see that they actually have teeth way back in where their throat would be. They have barbels on each side of their mouth, and they're often an orangish yellow color. Sometimes their fins can develop some red areas as well. The carp's first dorsal fin spine is serrated like a knife. Common carp are relatives to the mirror carp, which looks very similar, but the mirror carp have these scattered scales around their body that can lead to some very irregular patterns. There's also another species called the leather carp, which has no scales at all. Carp are not known to hybridize with any North American species, though they have been known to hybridize with goldfish. White Amur, or grass carp, are another introduced species to Iowa as well as much of North America. After 1960, 
we thought that maybe it'd be a good idea to put these fish in our waterways so that they could control vegetation, which they actually do a pretty good job of. The problem is, even though they did control a lot of the vegetative problems that we had, they actually almost did too good of a job. They ate so much of the vegetation that it leads to there being no vegetation around a pond or in a pond or in a river. And then you have a bunch of silt that's not held into the ground by any vegetation and it lowers water quality. While many grass carp are sold at fish farms and advertised as sterile, there are oftentimes some fertile grass carp mixed in there. And so for that reason, the state of Iowa doesn't really stock grass carp anymore. We do have wild reproducing grass carp populations in some of our rivers. Also in a lot of our local ponds, you'll find that there have been grass carp stocked at one point. And those grass carp do tend to keep some of that aquatic vegetation at bay. Grass carp tend to be a lot larger than common carp and they can grow to massive proportions because they really just eat their entire lives and they can live for quite a long time. They are known to be upwards of 50 or more pounds here in Iowa. You'll often see them cruising around near the surface and just sort of sipping vegetation off the surface. Close relatives of the grass carp are the silver carp and the big head carp. Both of these are also monikered the Asian carp, even though technically all three species, grass carp, silver carp, big head carp, are all from Asia. Silver carp and big head carp, they're known for their very unique jumping abilities, where if they hear something that spooks them, they will quite literally jump feet out of the water. Silver carp and big head carp are known for growing quickly, reproducing, and overtaking fisheries, which is a bad deal. And when they jump out of the water like they do, it can be a very dangerous situation for boaters and people that are recreating in an area. Now, after talking through all these fish species, something we need to be very clear about. It is not legal, it is not okay, to take any fish, even if it's invasive, and throw it on the bank and leave it. That is considered wanton waste, and that waste is something that can actually get you in trouble with the Iowa DNR. So should we remove invasive species from our waters? Yeah, sure. But if you're going to do that, make sure you're doing it in an appropriate manner and disposing of the fish properly. I would recommend if you're planning to keep something like a silver carp or a big head carp, find a way to cook it and eat it because it actually doesn't taste bad at all. It tastes pretty good. It's just a matter of preparing it in a way where you don't have a bunch of bones in the way. So it takes a little bit of time, but the meat is great. If you see people throwing fish on the bank and leaving them to die, please contact your local conservation officer or DNR law enforcement, because if that's the case, these people may need to just be educated on the fact that this is actually indeed illegal. Don't be afraid to peacefully confront someone and just let them know, hey, if you're killing this fish, that's fine, but you need to take it home. People are quite literally ruining fisheries by just killing fish for fun, leaving them on the bank, leaving them to waste. And that includes species like gar, buffalo, even common carp. It just is messy if we're leaving dead fish on the banks. So please do not leave your dead fish on the banks. It's fine if you keep a fish, bring it home, eat it, or use it as fertilizer, make good use of it. I would also encourage you guys to practice your fish identification lots. Maybe if you can't spend a bunch of time on the water fishing, find pictures online where you can compare and try to get some proper identifications on different fish species. Take pictures of your catch. This is a great way to be able to go home and study later and see exactly what type of fish it is. Thanks for watching Tight Lines. Hope to see you on the water.